Atlantis Houston, good morning. Good morning, Chris. Morning, Chili. That was Awake the Harp by Haydn, sung for Ron Sega by his friends at the Houston Choral Society. Well, I'll go downstairs and see if I did the trick. Chili, uh, let's just leave it in EVA uh, for the relay. And are you asking if you should take it back to exclusive mirror at the end of the relay? Uh, that's a firm. Uh, do you want me to take it back at 2330 or just leave it in EVA? Chili, you can just leave it there and, and uh, we'll give you a real-time call if necessary. Thank you much. And say, Sag Park, Atlanta, is he getting the video? That's negative. Ron just got it. Thank you. And what you see in the foreground is parts of the uh, Coors unit. Copy. We see that. So our plan would be to uh, go about trying to pack the uh, larger unit and then hold this one to the end. We concur with that, Ron. up, Ron. Got message 32 out. Okay, okay this is our uh, view of the uh, of the course being ready to pack. Um, we could probably get the smaller unit in it, and what we've included is primarily the white foam and not the uh, charcoal foam. Is this uh, acceptable? Concur, that's a good packing config. Thanks, Ron. Okay, Dave. And uh, are you going to be ready for the crew uh, option video? At your discretion, Shelly. Okay, I think Rick's going to run that for us today, and I'll turn it over to him. Okay. Well, hello, Dave. Uh, what we wanted to do was uh, take everyone down there on the ground through a tour of this magnificent. We've got about 12 or 13 minutes of that tour, and we'll wrap up back in the space hab and cut to Ron for some live action where he's uh, going to explain some of the science that he's doing in BioRack. So I'll just
get the uh, view set up here, and we'll uh, start the tour. It starts up on the shuttle flight deck. Okay, we'll bring down the flight deck. Thank you, Rick. And Dave, you should be getting some video now. You seen it? Affirmative. We have video of the flight deck. Okay, just a sweep through the flight deck. Uh, as you can see, this is a night pass outside when we took this video. Not too good of a view of the uh, of the docking apparatus and beer at night, but we'll come back to that and uh, give everyone a good look at it. As we go along here, we'll have uh, several of the crew members, both from uh, SCS-76 and MIR-21, performing transfer ops and various activities uh, in the tunnels, uh, onboard MIR, in the mid-deck, and in the uh, space hab. This view, of course, is coming down the ladder from the flight deck to the mid-deck, with a view of uh, Linda getting into uh, some locker stowage to uh, get something, I believe, for uh, space hab ops. Like we have some of the water fill equipment to the left. That's right. You can see the uh, Urbis cartridges hooked up together and some of the plumbing that goes into the galley. Of course, our Spirit of 76 uh, flag with uh, Rich right in front of it. It's been a very productive day so far. Busy at uh, transfer ops are going... Um, And uh, we're doing bringing up uh, a couple tons of water and supplies to uh, resupply the Mir space station. Kind of amazing, Rick, that uh, our excess water we need to get rid of is exactly what they need. It certainly is a complementary spacecraft system. Yeah, I agree. It's a perfect example of how we can uh, synergistically use our... Uh, complementary abilities of the two programs and the two vehicles to uh, get more accomplished than uh, either one of us alone would do. Now this is a view coming down uh, out of the uh, airlock and taking a turn at the ODS and now we're entering the uh, docking adapter and heading over to the Mir space station. As you can see throughout uh, this entire tour, uh, it gets pretty crowded in the passageways there. Most of these bags are filled with transfer items going one way or the other. Uh, here, Rob and uh, Yuri Yusachev are working some of those uh, transfers. And I couldn't resist the urge in a few spots in here to do a few aileron rolls uh, on the way. You always do them in the airplane. You might as well do them here. That's right. A few less Gs than we uh, pull flying that Eagle, though, right? Roger that. Uh, our transit route uh, today on this tour starts with the uh, docking adapter, and then uh, on our way to the node, we are transiting through the uh, Crystal module. The, notice the ducting on the way is air ducting for uh, the beer's uh, requirements. The big cable that we're going to see all the way into the base block is uh, for the bits new that sends audio through the orbiter system. From we have a camera hooked up in there. Very shortly here, we're going to get to the uh, node and take a turn. And I believe I went into Spectre next. We'll see when we get going here. Well, finally, space uh, vehicles are big enough to get a little lost in, huh, Rick? <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Uh, we'll, we'll see that graphically illustrated here in a little bit when we come back to the node. This is inside the Spectre module, which will be basically Shannon's home for the next uh, several months. She'll be conducting her experiments in here. and uh, uh, This is actually quite a roomy module, and it's uh, perhaps because it's... Uh, not as full of the uh, transfer items and, uh, and other equipment as some of the other modules are, but it's uh, starting to get that way. Had to do a U-turn down at the end here because there's no connection back. It's uh, everything, as you know, is plugged in uh, to the central node. You have the Spectre module, the uh, Crystal module leading into it, and then of course the base block on the other side.
out of the spectra into the uh, node, and from here, it should be going into the COMOD 2 module after that quick aileron roll. It's about a T38 roll rate there, I believe. Looked about right. And this is the COMOD 2 module. Right at the, uh, in the center of the field of view is one of the gyrodynes. Uh, we transferred one of those yesterday as one of our first transfer items, a, a new refurbished gyrodyne to the mirror, and then uh, we're taking back uh, an old one for uh, refurbishment and then subsequent resupply. It uh, points out a great capability that our shuttle has in taking uh, down mass from Earth orbit back down to the Earth and, uh, uh, in applications such as uh, space station or uh, uh, working with our partners on board Mir. Copy. out to the end of, uh, of the Kavant 2 module. And the metal containers are Russian water containers, and the white bags are our uh, CWC bags that uh, we've been transferring over, filling them up uh, out of the shuttle's um, fuel cell water that's produced and taking it over to Mir. I think, uh, if I'm correct, we're about half through with that water transfer fill operations right now. About right. Back out of Kalon 2. Uh, into uh, basically the cosmonauts living quarters next as we go into the base block, the headquarters, if you will, of the Mir space station. And this little uh, spinning is uh, just to graphically illustrate the point that uh, you can get lost in this uh, space station and you have to keep yourself oriented and when you get to the node, stop and take a second and figure out which way you're really going. Uh, you get used to it though after one or two transits and it really isn't too bad to do. Here, uh, Juliana Franco and Chile and Shannon are discussing some of the transfer operations. Uh, Chile has Chile and uh, Yuri are holding the, uh, one of the joint documents that we use to uh, work together. Yuri Yusachev uh, in the background by the table is uh, doing some prep for some transfer uh, items back from the mirror to the shuttle. From here we're going to proceed into the Kavant 1 module, and at the end of that is the Soyuz, and uh, we'll get all the way down to the end picture here, and uh, I poke the camera in board on the uh, Soyuz capsule, and uh, we'll see that shortly. Rick, it looks like you have a little pulley system to move along with. Yeah, that, that's true, Dave. They've got, uh, the Russians use uh, lots of bungees, both for hold downs and for uh, for pulling yourself along, and, and they're quite handy for translating. Uh, as you can see, uh, I remarked to one of the other crew members earlier today that moving around beer is kind of like being a spelunker exploring caves. There's a lot of uh, long, narrow, narrow passageways uh, for transit. Here are the... Uh, Russian suits uh, inside the Soyuz, and uh, not only the uh, three, of course, are Russian equipment, but uh, Shannon's suit is in there. It was checked out yesterday, and she's fully and officially a member of the Mir-21 crew now. Quick turnaround out of uh, Soyuz and Russian back. At this point, I was beginning to worry about the uh, battery on my compact portable light, so I kind of speeded the rate up a little bit here. We certainly hope not to use those mo mo Soyuz modules, but it's nice to know they're there should it become necessary. But this, uh, we just went by uh, one of the little living spaces. Uh, both Yuri, both Yuri's have their own individual compartment for sleep, and it's a very nice uh, opportunity for them to have some privacy uh, during the course of their long stays on board Mir. We're uh, approaching the node here shortly, and uh, then we'll be taking the pathway back to the space shuttle. There we go. We found the right one, and we're on the way.
about ready to enter the docking module. And if you notice, uh, in the lower center part of the field of view, you see a, a target similar to the, well, it is the exact docking target that Chile used uh, to dock yesterday. And we'll play uh, ODS centerline camera here for just a minute and do our own little docking maneuver. Copy that, Rick, and uh, we have to use that thing quite a few more times, so let's be careful with it. You bet. Notice it didn't even touch it. We just uh, took the video camera down to it. Back uh, into the shuttle ODS, where uh, Chile is doing some work. And from here, we're going to take a turn aft to the space hab, as Ron is taking some transfer items uh, out of the space hab tunnel into the mirror. Uh, these items, uh, most of these items here are items that are kept stowed to be returned and uh, on board the shuttle, but uh, we have not yet packed them up for uh, final stowage. Now we're inside the space hab. That's the gyrodyne that uh, we're returning to Earth that was on board Mir. It's all stowed and buttoned down, ready for uh, re-entry. And as we come aboard uh, the space hab, I'm going to cut to some live TV of uh, Ron, who's working in there, and he's going to take over the narrative describing some of his uh, bio-rack operations. So uh, we can take downlink to payload one now. Hello, Lynn and I are in the uh, space hab, which you probably saw from the uh, view that's past the docking module in the aft part of the payload bay of the shuttle, connected by a tunnel. And we have two main activities in the space hab. One is the transport of equipment. And we uh, have it stored in bags such as this, and we remove it and take it to beer. And we also return items from Russia, in this case, from the Russian uh, space station. In this case, it's empty food containers. So the, the number of items that we have include food, clothing, water, and science equipment for Shannon to enable her to do the long duration studies that will take place over the next roughly 140 days. This is going to be important for us in, the, uh, in working toward the International Space Station to get more experience of long duration flight and work, as well as technology development of our equipment that we will eventually fly on the space station, as well as beginning to uh, increase our database in the long duration studies of science. Now, we have one example of that here in the space hab. It's called BioRack. It's behind Linda and I. And it has flown three times before. It's a, uh, it's a mini biology laboratory built uh, by the European Space Agency. It's flown three times on the shuttle, uh, STS Mission 61A, the International Microgravity Laboratory 1 and 2, and now, of course, on our flight. And it's an example of international cooperation as well. In this particular uh, uh, rack, we have experiments uh, from the United States and Europe, three from the U.S., three from France, three from Germany, one for Switzerland, and one from France. And I think we'd like to acknowledge some of those that have, have done a great deal of work on this project. From, um, from the BioRack uh, uh, organization, we'd like to acknowledge Peter Ginzel, N.O. Brinkman, Claude Brule, Eve Strappis, and investigators from the U.S., Dr. Nelson, Hughes, Melford, and Lewis, and from the Europe, uh, European community, Dr. Smith, Kogoli, Trissy Cole, Volkman, Everson, Kiefer, Reitz, and Marcy. And they've all spent a great deal of time not only working on their individual experiments, but also how it can come together uh, in this in this one um, one facility and work work together. So the Lynn and I, when we work uh, in the glove box as well as the freezer and the incubators, uh, allowing each of the experiments to be carried on at the same time. Now I'd like to turn it over to Linda to describe some of the activities that she has been doing uh, today in the bio rack. Well, Rob and I are taking turns. Um manipulating the samples in our little mini biology laboratory here, and it's really been kind of fun to do. And we've got a neat little lab set up. This is our, uh, <clears throat> I guess, our working position. We have our feet down here in some foot restraints. And from this location, 
I can re uh, reach our Leslie freezer, which is on this end. We open this up and we're keeping some of our samples and cold storage, frozen storage. And over to my right behind Ron, we have what are basically two coolers set up that keep us the samples at about 5 degrees centigrade. So they're more of a refrigerator, they're not a freezer. And at various stages when we are uh, growing some of these samples, putting fixative in them, washing them, just waiting or letting them incubate, they go in different places in our little mini laboratory here. Uh, today, for example, some of the cells I've been working with are osteo. Uh, we're looking at the effects of microgravity on both cell growth and Earth orbit. In front of me, and Ron mentioned it as a glove box, uh, we can fit our hands into these gloves, and inside this compartment, we can work uh, with these samples that just need to be contained so that, that uh, liquids which might come out of them don't float around the cabin, or if they're potentially irritating to our eyes, it keeps them in here, and I'm happy to relay so everything's been going well. Uh, but the glove box makes it a, a very good place for us to work. And because some of our samples, or our biology tissue samples, have to be incubated, uh, we have two incubators that are two different temperatures. This one's at 22 degrees uh, Celsius, and this one is at 36 degrees Celsius. So this is a little warmer on the bottom. And inside each of those incubators, we have uh, some centrifuges as well, because some of the samples are spun uh, to simulate a little bit of uh, acceleration on them, uh, kind of like having a 1G effect like they were on the ground. So when we work here, we can work with the glove box, incubators, samples in the refrigerator, in the cooler, and some things that are stowed over here on the right. So we basically have our own little laboratory in the corner, very compact, very well designed, and everything we need is uh, within reach. And this is a lot of the science that we're doing on the shuttle for this mission. Uh, we hope to come back with some very interesting results. No, so, Linda, I think that was, uh, that was great with respect to the bio racks. We'll be doing some fundamental biology, some development of, of technology, as well as characterizing the environment, some of the radiation and so forth. And Shannon will be carrying on uh, doing similar work in, in fundamental biology and life sciences, looking at material systems, alloys, uh, looking back into the Earth's atmosphere, using a very similar glove box arrangement in the Perota module when it arrives next month. So uh, her activity, I think, is going to be very important. And after uh, after her uh, uh, time is done, John Blaha will continue, and we'll have a uh, continuous U.S. presence uh, obtaining science uh, on Mir during this phase of our joint program and leading us into the International Space Station. Uh, thanks for your attention today. Mr. Golden, this is Houston. Please go ahead. Hello, Kevin. How are you feeling? It's terrific, Mr. Golden. We're having a great time up here. I want to say with each of the rendezvous, the pilots and commanders are getting better and better. I don't know who has the accuracy record. Are you holding it right now, or does uh, Hoot Gibson still have it? I couldn't tell you, sir. My eyes are closed when we docked. <laughs> we actually have very little time. Each time I look uh, through the porthole, we see the parts of two space vehicles, the station and shuttle. This is a wonderful picture. And we have these two systems uh, look very good together. And they will confirm 
the view of a big that this is very symbolic that these two systems fly together and cooperate and create such beauty. This is a good example and a good uh, in, uh, precursor for the future s Alpha Station. I would like to thank everybody who took part who participated in this project. They did a great deal of work and have allowed us to understand each other better and to work together. Thank you. When is the shuttle going to pull away? For three more days. I spent uh, last night on Mir because now I'm part of the uh, Mir 21 crew. And I must say that Yuri and Yuri have gone out of the way to make sure that I feel at home and that I'm very comfortable here. I'm sure that this is going to be really exciting. And uh, I'm looking forward to when you get back to get a sense uh, from an American what it's like to be in space so long. Our Russian friends have been there for more than a year on, on single missions, and I think this uh, mission that you have is going to really help us better understand how to prepare for the International Space Station. And we're not just interested in the technical things. Uh, some of the uh, psychological impacts of isolation up in space is pretty important also. You know, we learned from Norm uh, Saget's mission, and I really hope when you come back I'll have a chance to talk to you about your observations of... Uh, what it feels like to be up there. But you'll be connected electronically, at least. That's true, and I think that uh, we'll learn a lot, and I think that it's a very good opportunity that we as America have to uh, start establishing a presence in space for a continuous period of time. Well, I'm and I'll be very happy to talk to you when I get back. Okay, I, I'm going to lose communication in a few minutes, and I know you have a lot to do. I just wanted to once again say, before the mission is even complete, how proud I am of you and how pleased I am that we're working so cooperatively with our Russian friends. And I think the world is in for a whole new era at the turn of the century because of what you're doing today. Thank you so much, and God bless you all. Thank you, Mr. Golden, and uh, God bless you. And uh, I want to personally uh, congratulate the rest of the crew up here. These guys have really been working hard, and we look forward to seeing you in a few days. I see you. Thank you. Bye-bye.